Okay, now we're going to read chapter 4 here. Your Nightmares in Paradise. Chapter 4, of course, by Whole Thing Show. This chapter is entitled, Arriving at the Unknown. Okay. Equestria. Random fucking field. In the middle of a field, deep on the outskirts of Ponyville, laid nine roan men, three children, and one diabolical alien. Unlike Team Blue, the WB superstars were in their human form. They had hands, not hooves, and unlike all ponies, except for special occasions, they were wearing a wrestling attire, except for Freddy, Freddy's kids who were wearing clothes ten-year-olds would wear. Ugh, groaned Nova. Where in an ostrich's ass are we? Looks like some kind of random field, answered Zane. Looks kind of familiar for some odd reason, said Nathan, really racking his brain on where he had seen this field before. Z thinks we're in a different dimension! Everyone glared at him for saying what he, they already knew. Boy, grumbled Marcus, just what the fuck makes you think that? Calm down, Mark, said Austin, trying to get Sims' blood pressure back to normal. We obviously aren't on Earth anymore. Austin started looking around this new world. Look, they were in a world where animation ru ruled the roost. Holy shit! exclaimed Freddy. We're, we're animated! Everyone gasped and looked at themselves. Freddy was right. Instead of their usual five fingers, they had the animation minimum of four fingers. Damn that stupid alien! yelled the WB champion CM Punk. Because of him and his stupid machines, we're in God knows where, and we only have four fingers! Hey, said Freddy. At least you've still got your belt. Punk looked down. The WB title was laying on the ground. He picked it up and put it over his shoulder. And we've got our computer! Zane and Nathan simultaneously yelled. I wonder how it feels to jack off while animated, Nova said, rubbing his chin thoughtfully with his index finger. Z would like to test his theory as well. With that, Zane went to Pornhub, and him, Z, Nathan, and Nova started jacking off. Uh, this is escalating pretty quickly. <sighs> hey, yelled Sims. Take it outside. He felt stupid for saying that. They already were outside. Where the hell do you think we are? Argued Nathan. Man, this does feel good to do. Oh yeah, Nova said jo joyfully. Rip that ass! Rip that ass! I am surrounded by pawns, fought Austin. Hey guys, said Freddy. Why not put the porn away? Let's kick Pyro Z's ass! To that, everyone cheered. Ryback just nodded. Upset, he had been thrown into the situation. He was ready to squeeze that purple bastard's face like a vice. Not so fast, bro, explained Punk. He's gone! Everyone cursed out loud. He couldn't have gone too far, said Austin. Who, ca who cares, said Marcus without a pause. He lied down into the field. The grass was surprisingly comfortable. We finally have some peace. We aren't crammed into a tiny locker room anymore. Now we have a whole open field. Everyone thought about it for a moment and nodded. They were finally happy to be away from their sometimes annoying job. Yeah, it ain't so bad. I'm finally away from my stupid nephew, said Freddy. You and me both, brother, said Austin, nodding. Freddy and Austin fist bumped. But hey, said Punk, you're the chairman, man. Who's going to run things while you're gone? You don't know how long we're going to be here. Freddy thought about it for a moment. He had a lot of responsibility running the day-to-day -day op operations of the WB, but he needed the break. Yeah, for doing a job for a month. What a loser. What a lazy bum. He can't do a job for a month. Whoever it is, good luck to them, Punk laughed. Ryback paced around. He didn't care what they said. He enjoyed being the only undefeated wrestler on the WB roster. A day without squashing someone just didn't a day at all for him. Hey, big man, said Freddy. Chillax. We surely won't be here too long. To that, Ryback nodded and sat down in the soft grass. How is this grass so soft, said Marcus. Okay, I went from white boy to black boy in a minute. How is this grass so soft, said Marcus. It's unbelievable. Z wonders if such grass is edible. With that, Z took a chomp out of the grass, but he immediately spit it out. Well, asked Punk, does it taste like your mom's vagina? Z would not know what that tastes like. Punk chuckled at that lie. But Z's diagnosis? It tastes like my cat's vagina. How, and he... What's the difference? I'd like to know that. Someone told me the difference between a mom 
Now, cat pussy. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Cool, said Punt. You even gave detail. Z rolled his eyes at this. As all this conversation was going on, no one seemed to notice where Freddy's kids had ran off to. Wait a minute, said Freddy. Where's my fucking kids? What a horrible father. Hmm. What a dick. Meanwhile, the Everfree Forest. As soon as they arrived, Pyro Z quickly tiptoed off, avoiding being seen by his fellow wrestlers. After a few minutes of walking, he ended up in the Everfree Forest. Hmm, such a dark and disturbing residence this seems to be. As he was saying this, some evil free-eyed bird flew right in front of Pyro Z's face. The Emperor was startled, but not scared. He quickly unhatched the briefcase he was carrying and pulled out some calculator-like device. Pyro Z punched in a number and, some, and a gun of some type appeared in his hands. Laser Zuka! Fire! Pyro Z fired the laser gun, which in turn fired a laser, which in turn charred that bird's head into a strip style stake, which in turn created the largest witch in turn sentence in fan fiction history. I'm such a smart ass. Pyro Z smirked. Thank the Unsurian Nebula, I managed to grab my inventional case. Now I have every weapon or invention I've ever made at my full disposal. Pyro Z started to laugh man maniacally. It Fuck. Fuck that word's hard to say. But soon decided to shut up. I may want to nudge the decibels down just a bit. The last thing I want is to be caught. Pyro Z looked at the bird he had just killed. The only thing damaged was his head. Pyro Z stomped on the fried head, causing blood to gush all over his boots. Ugh, this is disgusting. Engage quick rinse secrets. With that, a medium-sized fan appeared. It sprayed the blood and brain matter off of Pyro Z's boots in a jiffy and de transform back into the briefcase on Pyro Z's command. Yes, quite lucky I am to have all this at my disposal. Disposal! Pyro Z looked at the extremely large claws of the bird and saw them off with some metal appliance. Hmm, I could make something with these. With that, Pyro Z took out some tools and got to work on his new invention. I really need to come up with a new... V I'm trying to get the voice for Pyro Z down. He's an alien, but... The alien voice I make sounds like just a robot, and that's not good. Oh well, I'll think of it. Meanwhile, keep up, slow pokes, teased Rainbow Dash, way ahead of the path. We'll be there soon. Ugh, exclaimed Rarity. I'm running so hard, my hoofs are creating clouds of dust. Rarity then sneezed multiple times. This is no time to worry about our appearance, Rarity, said Twilight. Whatever is here in Ponyville, we need to meet it head on. She's right, Sugar Cube. Applejack nodded. Well, huffed Rarity, I'm just wondering if we could get there without engaging in filthy repercussions. I could teleport us there, thought Twilight, but I'm too worn out right now to use to think about magic. What have you done today? You purple nurple, you've done nothing. Why, why are you so worn out? Gave Spike a blowjob? Well, don't do that, then. Wow, that hard? Really? Dragons aren't that appealing. Unless they got something I don't. Probably do. I'm a loser. Okay. Do you really think it could be Team Blue that made... Dang it, that's Fluttershy. Do you really think that it could be Team Blue that made that noise? Said Fluttershy. Oh, boy! exclaimed Pinky. I sure hope so. I want to give Scout these mop cakes for what he sent to me in my letter. Pinky cringed at the thought of the extremities of the letter. What did the bad what did that bad dream do this time? said Applejack, rolling her eyes. She remembered how Scout made herself and Demoman scratch up as close as possible to one another. On contact with her rump, Demoman's um apple tree bloomed in size. Yeah, good analogy. Yeah, real good analogy. Makes me think of stuff that's bad. I don't want to talk about it, replied Pinky, still trying to spit the taste out of her mouth. All you guys need to know is I could feel his presence in some disgusting way, Pinky cringed. No pony seemed to understand, so Pinky whispered it all in their ears. What tarnation, replied Applejack. That's seven kinds of nasty. Not even my magic can erase what you just told from my mind, said Twilight, shaking her head. Um, said Fluttershy quietly. That's gross. Out of all the gross things to happen, said Rarity, getting ready to her, pri getting ready to her 
reprise her award-winning meme. That is the grossest possible thing! She cringed at what she had been told. She was glad Engineer wasn't like that. Why would you lick that off of your face, sweetie? Rarity pretty much screamed. I thought it was icing, Pinky said disappointingly while hanging her head in shame. Every pony groaned. What was it? asked the curious Spike. Spike? Shut up, said Twilight with a hint of annoyed. Well, if you would stop talking like that around the baby dragon, maybe he wouldn't be so curious. Dumb, dumb mares. I just want the truth, replied Spike. You can't handle the truth, yelled Twilight, gesturing for every pony else to keep walking. What's up with her? Spike whispered to Fluttershy. Well, Spike, replied Fluttershy, she's got 99 problems, but a baby dragon isn't one of them. What? yelled Spike, still clearly confused. I'll tell you when you're older, Spikey Wikey, said Rarity, nuzzling Spike's baby cheek. Spike started drooling. I'm jealous. Let's keep going before I kill Spike. Yes, replied Fluttershy with a nod. She then cowered. Well, if that's okay with you, of course. Then, out of nowhere, Rainbow Dash came flying to the ground, landing in front of the rest of the main six with three little creatures. Guys, said Rainbow Dash, who missed all the jizz talk. These three said they can take us to whatever made that noise. Every pony cheered. Is that right? asked Twilight. She'd never seen creatures like th these before. For one, they didn't have sparkles in their eyes like Hasbro gave them, joked Drum. Two, they had fingers like Spike. Aw, yeah, replied Damien with a smile. Follow us, said Kit. We know the way, said Tate, and apparently these free idiots have the same voice. Huh, that was not planned, but whatever. Then, all three of the children realized what they were talking to. At the same time, they yelled, Ponies? They then ran off screaming. Hey, wait up, you little jumping mute sugary rectangle, screamed Applejack. And with that, the chase was on. To be continued, graham crackers are, are delicious. Wow, this is the shortest chapter and reading so far huh that's pretty cool wow huh huh yeah well paint this in your anus <laughs>